And good evening, and welcome to City Focus. I'm Marty Olson, your host, and as you can tell, I've got my uh, Mitchell College hat on tonight, which might lead you to believe I've got a, a Mitchell College guest, and, and lo and behold, I do. I've got uh, the brand new head women's basketball coach at Mitchell College, Ashley Wilson, and uh, I want to welcome you to the program. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, I'm excited, and uh, when you got the hire, I mean, I don't, I just, I'm just meeting you this evening, but uh, so I got to get this uh, this young lady on the on the program <laughs> here and uh, see what she's going to bring to to Mitchell and to the community, and uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of excitement. Uh, your predecessor, Ms. Burns, over her tenure, uh, was showing, I think, some pretty significant positive progress, and. Uh, uh, and she, you'll have lost a few good players. Yes. And it's, we're seniors that have graduated that uh, big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely big shoes to fill, but I'm definitely super excited about this opportunity. And I'm just happy to be here. The girls are excited. We're all on the same page. And we're looking to continue the great success that they've had in the past. Now, you, uh, you come from uh, what I would call the Midwest area. You're out in Michigan. Uh, Yes. went to a Wayne State University, and you played ball out there. And uh, perhaps you could share a little bit about where you've uh, come from and uh, up through college and how you've maneuvered your way here into New London, Connecticut. Yes, yeah, so it's a story. Honestly, um, I'm from Portage, Michigan. Um, it's near Kalamazoo area. Um, many people don't know where that is, so usually I say Kalamazoo because some people are familiar with Western Michigan. But um, yeah, growing up there, always into sports, started sports young. My mom, basketball player, volleyball player, softball player. My dad, always into sports, um, basketball, football, and just an athletic family. I have cousins that went to Ohio State, Rhode Island, and you know, we're just a basketball family, it's in the blood. Um, from there, I went to Olivet Nazarene. So I started off small NAIA school in Chicago and I had good success there, but you know, I wanted to push myself and really get the full experience of being a student athlete on a higher level. So, you know, back then, it seems like so long ago, but it wasn't the transfer portal. It wasn't, you know, all that these. It didn't exist. Yeah, it didn't exist. So, you know, I literally had to pull myself out of school and just hope for the best. So my mom was like my agent. She was emailing, burning my, um, my, my DVDs, my game tapes, sending them all over, and sent the film to Wayne State. And luckily, that year, they were looking for transfer experienced players. And I was one of the five players that they brought in that year. Oh, wow. Did you come in as a sophomore or a junior? Sophomore. And you were able to play right away, Jeff, the city year. Yes, I was able to play right away. So that year, bringing in five new players, we had the talent, but it was just about putting it together. And we actually finally got it together about mid-season. Things started clicking, and we went to the Sweet 16. So, you know, it was night and day from the first university that I started at. But, you know, now I was able to play on a higher level, um, we got to scrimmage, University of Michigan, um, Notre Dame. So just playing in these big arenas versus, you know, the top players was an amazing experience for me. Um, from there, you know, I, I went overseas, played in Portugal. Um, from there, went to Asia, played a little FIBA three-on-three. -three. I got into teaching was that, English. Was that, was that professional? Were you... Uh, yes, doing? yes. So... It was professional, and then I, I also got to get little gigs along the way through um, Nike Rise Academies and different things. So over the summer, the NBA guys have contracts, and they have to do, like, skill camps and different things. So, you know, I would come in and lead camps for Devin Booker and different guys like this. So it was a very cool experience. Like I said, I was doing a little bit of everything, but um, really coaching stuck for me overseas. And I knew if I got the opportunity back home to coach, I would love it. So, you know, top of 2020, COVID broke out. My mom was like, yep, it's time to come home. So, 
<laughs> before, I was fortunate because before it got too bad and everything shut down in Asia, because that's where I was at the time, and I had no idea COVID was even there. My mom calls, tells me, and I'm like, are you sure? She's like, yeah, it's there, come <laughs> home. So, you know, before the news even broke, I, I got home, I was safe, and um, about two weeks later, the shutdown happened over there. So I just made it back home, um, got back to the drawing boards, um, and I was fortunate to end up at Putnam Science Academy. That's where I started my coaching career in the States. Um, prep school. And, that, and that's here? Yes. I'm just up the road. Yes. Um, so prep school. Um, so yeah, it, w it was a great experience for me. Um, unfortunately, season got cut short because of COVID. <laughs> so we only got to play three games, but went undefeated. Won all three games. Uh, <laughs> the following year, I was called up to be an assistant coach at Central Connecticut State University. So I spent two years there. Um, and yeah, after that, you know, I got an what, opportunity. What, what were your duties and responsibilities at Central? At Central, oh wow, <laughs> I could name I could name a few, but you know, they're kind of they're kind of like a mid, you know, lower level D one school. I mean, uh, right, right. You know, the so Northeast Conference. Right. So you would think Division One, you would have, you know, seven to eight people on the roster or seven to eight people on the coaching staff, rather. Um, but no, we had three. So me being the youngest coach, the rookie coach, per se, I had the, the direction of operations, responsibilities. So, you know, I'm making the calls, the reservations the bus schedules, um, I'm hosting the teams when they come in, handling the officials, um, all the paperwork, all the reconciliation paperwork, um, all the game management day to day, the practice planning, the practice setup, um, you know, anything that the girls may need as far as gear, equipment, I'm putting in purchase orders, I'm doing a lot of the operational behind the scenes work so, you know. How about basketball? Well, that was the thing. <laughs> so I was more so of, I would say, a personal trainer because, you know, again, my first year there, I kind of had to earn my stripes. So I was, you know, saying how I felt, saying, you know, different philosophies that I thought, but they weren't always sticking until about the second year. So my second year at CCSU, I had more of a coach's role and more of a coach's voice. And that's when I really knew that, you know, I, I wanna be a head coach. So I was thankful for this opportunity at Mitchell. As soon as I saw the opening, I went ahead and applied right away. And here I am today. My goodness, so you've had, uh between Putnam and New Britain and now New London. You've been in Connecticut now for a number of years then. Yes, yes. So how do you like being in the Northeast in New England? You know, it's, it's totally different from where I'm from in Michigan, small town, um, small city in Michigan, but um, I love it here. I love it here. I, I love to travel. Um, as you can tell by my background, I love new adventures, new experiences, new cultures. So I feel like being here, you know, I'm near a lot of other major cities and it's two hours, New York, Boston, Rhode Island, like I'm, I'm in, a, in a hub where I can quickly go to different states, different regions, and I love that. Well, that is for sure. And uh, you're not that far from getting into northern New England, which is also different in itself. I mean, I don't know if you ski or do any uh, winter sports, but, uh, Yes. You know, got the you know you got the mountains up in Vermont, New Hampshire. And, uh, right, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, and being from Michigan, snow to me. You know, I'm not big on winters, but I love it. It looks beautiful. I like a I like a snowy December. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to just take a half a step back though when you were at uh, a Wayne State, a D2 school. I did a little bit of research uh, uh, on your conference. Mm -hmm. And some of the schools that were in that conference were playing Division One ice hockey. Yes. 
not your school, but there were other schools in that uh, conference. I mean, Lake Superior State comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see that in this part of the country, too, where there's some D2 or D, even D3 schools that are playing Division One ice hockey. Definitely. Uh, which uh, you don't see a lot of that kind of jumping around in, in football or, or basketball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Although I must say in recent years with scheduling that uh, Mitchell and Connecticut College and Coast Guard, uh, I think the men and the women have uh, played some game that count uh, against D1 competition. I, mean, I know that Coast Guard went to West Point and played Army. Uh, Mitchell went down to Yale. Mm -hmm. Uh, Con College actually went to Central and played. I went to that game up in New Britain for a half. The, yeah. And these were all the men, I might add. But, yes. Uh, they, uh, the, uh, the men hung with, uh, with Central for a half, and then the second half they got blown out. But uh, Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's always fun to see. Me playing at Wayne State, um, I mentioned, you know, we, we played the University of Michigan. We played Notre Dame. We played Eastern Michigan. So, you know, playing up has always been so fun to me, and I'm super competitive, so just really seeing where you measure up from Division Two, Division One, you know, when you're a, at a good, solid D2 program, those lines are really blurred when you're playing those mid-major D1 schools because, you know, we were competing. We were competing, um, and like you said, the first half of games, we would be hanging around, and then towards the end, it falls off a little bit. But, you know, we play hard, and it doesn't matter what division. We're coming out the same way every time. And, you know, that's what I really want to instill in our players at uh, Mitchell. Um, it doesn't matter who we're playing. We're coming out hard. We're coming out aggressive. And we're playing our style of play. And um, we actually scheduled Bryant. So is that a regular game or is, there, is that going to be a scrimmage? Yes, that'll be a regular game. Will that be up there or down here? Um, up there. Yeah. Uh, well, that usually happens. The D3 school travels. Yes, yes. So it'll, it'll be a big test for us, but we're up for it. Now, um, last year's squad made the NCAA tournament uh, at Mitchell. And uh, looking over last year's roster, um, it appears that nine of the students uh, could be uh, coming back. I don't know if they all are or not. Maybe you could help enlighten us in terms of what you've got for uh, for a roster. Uh, and you've, I think I mentioned you lost three really good players there. Uh, let me just see yes. here. Uh, Dee Dee Stevenson was a fireball. She was fun to watch, I might add. And uh, uh, Mina Wiley was a big girl who was tough on the boards. Oh, yeah. And uh, Sam McKenna had quite a outside shot. She had a little inside outside, and uh, a girl who could shoot and dish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So those are big holes to fill in your in your roster. Definitely, definitely. And we we also lost a few more pieces as well. Um, girls who just you know were ready to hang up their basketball shoes, and you know right now we're a little limited. We're at about eight, nine players, but key pieces um, to really build the camaraderie, really build, you know, the the team environment that I want. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the pieces that we're bringing back. Um, some haven't played major minutes, but they're going to have an opportunity to really step up and, you know, prove what they can do this year. Now, um when uh, you know, school should be starting pretty soon if it already hasn't. Yes, move-in day was actually today. <laughs> so when when are you uh, allowed to start getting your group together and practicing for the season? October 1. So we can start with just workouts, individual workouts, um, three to four player workouts. Um, and then we're full go October 15th. Full go. And when does your schedule get released, and when do you and do you have any input on that, or is the athletic director's office uh, kind of putting this together since you've kind of come in yes, midstream? Yes. Yes. Due to my my later start, it was already preset. 
Um, but moving forward, I'll definitely have more input into our schedule. Um, hopefully it's released, hopefully, early October. Because uh, I know that the D1 schools, are all, they're all releasing now. Yeah, yeah, they're slowly releasing. But I think we'll hold off a little bit, do some more confirming. But probably, hopefully, end of August. Hopefully. Okay. Well, I know I enjoy going down and, and when I'm able to, to watch uh, Mitchell's, the, the men and the women. And uh, so I anticipate I'll get a chance to see your squad at some point during the course of the season. So I'll be looking forward to that. Well, we'll be looking for you. <laughs> from what I hear, you know, the environment, the support from the community is great. So I'm, I'm really excited, you know, coming from, you know, coaching at Putnam, we, we didn't have fans due to COVID. And then going to Central Connecticut, for whatever reason, we didn't get a lot of fans in the stands and games were a little quiet, not too many in the seats. So, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a crowd and hearing, you know, the crowd noise and it's, it's really going to amp up what we do on the court. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many games you'll have scheduled where you're playing double headers with uh, you and, and then the men. Uh, yes. Whether you're playing the same schools or different schools, but mm -hmm. just uh, I think that that helps to uh, build the audience as well as um, the, the uh, you know, the men's team the last few years has also done pretty well and they've been getting into the NCAA tournament a few times. So there's a level of, uh, there's been a level of excitement that uh, is building at Mitchell and, and D3 in particular, in general, I would say. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, me and Todd, we, we talk almost every day. He's, he's a great guy. His enthusiasm, his energy is really infectious. So, you know, if we can have double headers, I feel like the better, the more the better. You know, I played at Wayne State and we had Saturdays back to back. And, you know, we would get the tail in. We, we would know, you know, sometimes it was more so for the men's game, but Having our stands packed, like that's that's a totally different experience playing. So I support the double headers. Yeah. Well, it's an intimate uh, gym that the Mitchell plays in. Yes. So it's not you're not going to get overwhelmed where you're playing in this giant cavernous <laughs> place with with you know 100 people and, oh, and yeah. a place that holds you know 15,000. That, that right, can... right, right, right. Hey. It's a little different, right? <laughs> So I think that, you know, when there's a good crowd, that's an advantage for the home team. Yes. And I must say that I, at a personal level, I've enjoyed and continue to is to watch uh, Khan, Khan College mm -hmm. in town, where I also went to school, mm -hmm. and Coast Guard. And, and so we have three D3 schools in New London. Yes. And uh, I, watching the, the inner city rivalries between the schools is, is, is I find, fun and interesting. and. Uh, you know, Mitchell is a is coming on pretty strong. I mean, uh, they they've been a relatively new uh, four year program. They were a long, long, long time junior college. Yes. So it's you, know, you just don't build a program overnight. It takes a little bit of time. Exactly. Exactly. Start from ground zero and work your way up. <laughs> you know, and and the different schools have different uh, different types of student athletes. I mean, Coast Guard's got a recruiting base that's national. Mm -hmm. And uh, Khan it tends to have uh, most of their players coming out of the prep schools, quite frankly. You don't see too many public school kids going to Connecticut College, and you don't see too many prep school kids going to Mitchell, mm -hmm. mostly a public school environment. And, right, uh, right. Different types of students. That's correct, that's correct. And you know, me having ties to the prep schools, you know, I'm looking there as well as I look to recruit in the future. Yeah. Now, how do you anticipate recruiting? I mean, um, do you expect that you'll be going out looking and seeing at players, or do you have a staff and assistants that'll do that, or is more of this being done uh, digitally, or you know, by by by? Uh... Yes. Yes. So you know. The one thing that COVID did was make us utilize all the other resources with technology. 
So, you know, the, the times that I'm not able to get on the road or, you know, let's say I am on the road, but I also want to watch games in New Orleans, <laughs> I can do that now um, through just virtually recruiting, um, watching film, and sometimes they stream it right live. You know, you just make an account and you're in there. So it, it's pretty cool because you can um, expand and you can hit more tournaments than I could doing it by myself because um, right now it's just me. Um, I am looking to hire staff, but right so now- So you have no staff at the moment? At the moment I have no staff. You know, so it's, it's people that, you know, are local that want to help out. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking and I'm interviewing those people um, actively right now but I haven't locked in on exactly who I want to be a part of the program as of yet. So, you know, it's been me the past two months going out on the road. I was in New York, I was in Atlantic City. Um, and yeah, I watched the battle at the Bayou, um, but I did that virtually. So <laughs> again, using my resources since I am um, the only one actively recruiting right now. Well, have you had any contact with uh, Tammy Millsaps at New Orleans High School? Tammy Millsaps. She's the head girls basketball coach at the state champion in New Orleans High School. Yes, yes. I see the banners all around town. I, I reached out to her and, you know, hopefully in the future we can definitely work together more. Yeah. Well, she, she had worked at uh, uh, Capital Prep and then she came to New London. And this past year she wins the state championship with seven kids. Wow, I didn't realize they only had seven. That's that's impressive. That's very impressive. Yes. No. Wow. No, she she's a she a good coach. Yes. One of her students is graduated is going to a Sacred Heart. Yep. So that's down in uh, the Bridgeport Fairfield area. Oh yeah, they were in the conference with uh, Central Connecticut, so familiar with Sacred Heart. Yeah. Yes. So she must be a pretty good ball player to be able to play at that level. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And good. then a few years ago, we had a couple of girls out in New London. One went to um, Hartford, University of Hartford, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, uh, India Pagan went to Stony Brook. And, yes. Uh, Stony, and, and from Stony Brook, she's now playing or had played on the Puerto Rican national team, mm -hmm. played in the Olympics. Yeah. So there's yeah. some talent locally. Oh yes, oh yes. I'm definitely looking forward to tapping into what's in the backyard here. <laughs> so I, I uh, and you already get to know the, the athletic directors and the coaches and. Yep, yep. Building, building my network slowly but surely. Yeah, it's not gonna happen overnight. I mean. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yes, yes. But that's, uh, you know, I've had a number of coaches and ADs uh, at the high school and college, the local colleges, sitting where you are. And, you know, it's, it's a you know, critical part of their job is, the, uh, is networking. Most definitely. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. You know, you can't see all the players. And, I, and from what I understand uh, at, at Conn College in particular, that uh, many of their players come to them. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's hard to get out and recruit so that... Uh, some, some students that are looking for a, uh, uh, a small liberal arts college level education and cons a very, very good school, uh, and they like to play ball and they're not looking to play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. they, they, I think, have a handle on their skill set. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. You know, um, it's, a lot of it's a lot of players like that now that understand, you know, the ball is going to stop bouncing. <laughs> so they're more so focused on their academics. So a lot of those kids have reached out and that's why it's important to, you know, really be on the social platforms. Um, so I'm making sure that every day I'm logging in, whether it's um, Instagram, Twitter, because a lot of players are there and that's how they're connecting with me. So making sure I'm present on all socials is important. Yeah, well, that, and that's uh, you know, something that uh <clears throat> you know, I think a lot of kids, and, and I think their parents, maybe even more so, at the high school level, that they think their kids are perhaps a, a taste better than maybe they really are. Yes. <laughs> and that they're, you know, that they're not going to play for UConn or uh, Notre right, Dame. They're right. Gonna, 
they're going to play it central or or yeah. or Mitchell or or wherever or whatever their academic endeavors are, whatever they want to be when they grow up. Right, right, right. So, you know, for the player to really understand that and to, you know, for me, it's important that I'm really being personable and getting to know who the player is as a person. Um, because as an athlete, that just can't be who you are in your identity, you know, because like I said, when the ball stops bouncing, what happens to you? You know, you still have to keep thriving in whatever you want to do um, outside of basketball as well. So for me, it's connecting to who you are, to your core, what your interests are outside of basketball, and tying that in to, you know, you being successful at Mitchell. Yeah. Now, if you had an opportunity to uh, meet or interact with any of the uh, faculty and staff at the school yet? Uh, yes. Where I think having a good rapport uh, at that level. So if any of your players, uh, hopefully not, but if they're having issues or struggling in the classroom, that it can be nipped in the bud so that you don't have uh, academic problems and losing yes. players uh, because they're not up to par. Yes, um, and thankfully Mitchell has just been outstanding um, with reaching out to me with um, just making sure that I, if I do have questions, concerns, I can always go to an open door, um, whether that's Dr. Espy herself, the president of the school has been great, um, and just really, really um, getting to know me, making sure that I'm okay, um, keeping me up to speed with what's going on on campus, and even our AD, um, Matt, has been phenomenal as well. And, you know, again, making sure that I'm okay, do I need anything, if I need help, and you know, it's, it's the support there has just been something I've never seen on any level <laughs> at any um, organization program that I've been a part of. So, you know, coming in and going through the interview process, everyone was saying, you know, it's very family oriented, but a lot of times you hear that, but until you come to a campus like Mitchell and feel that, you won't really understand it. So it's just been great. And my transition has been very smooth. Everyone has been very hands-on and, you know, um, it's been good. So again, I wanna be that way for my players. And, you know, they understand that at Mitchell you cannot hide. So it's about going to class, going to school first, and then coming to me and we'll play basketball. <laughs> yeah. But you have to make sure you're taking care of business because I'll be the first to know if you're not. <laughs> well, that's important. I mean, the, the uh, you know, and looking over your, the, the new conference that you're in, which is the New England, uh, uh, geez, I just had it written down here someplace. Where the heck did it go? Well, I'll, 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 I'll here it is. Yes. The Great Northeast Great. Athletic Conference. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, that's a big conference. I mean, including Mitchell, there's 16 schools. And it appears that most, most are in southern New England. Yes. But there are a couple of outliers. I mean, Norwich is up in northern Vermont. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a school in Maine, and I'm not sure how far up it is, but you know, Maine can go, go and go and go. Yes. I mean, Maine's a big state. Yes. Um, so that uh, you probably won't have a lot of... Uh, if any, well, you know, overnight travel, unless you're going, maybe, I don't know if you're up in, up in Norwich, but. Uh. Yeah, yeah, right now there's no overnight trips and those longer trips will double head with our boys. So that'll be a long day, a long day of travel, a long day of games, but you know, that that's how we're going about that. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the road trips and you know, uh, it'll be our first time, everyone's first time, so it's, it'll be good. Yeah, and, and this is a, uh, I guess it's a large conference, and uh, I'm just gonna run through these different schools here, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, Albertus Magnus, that's down in New Haven. Uh, Anna Maria, uh, Colby Sawyer, Dean, which is up in Franklin, Mass. And Dean was like Mitchell, they were a two-year school, but uh, private two-year school. And in order to compete with the, they would go into four-year schools, as Mitchell did, because they couldn't compete with the community colleges. You get the same 
quality education for a bargain with the community yeah, colleges. Yeah. Uh, Elms, Elms has been in a mm -hmm. conference with Mitchell before. I don't know if, if uh, Emanuel's up in Boston, Johnson mm -hmm. & Wales over in uh, Providence. LaSalle, I, I believe is outside of Boston. Yeah. Uh, Norwich, Regis, and Riviera University. I'm not familiar with either of them. I don't know where they are. Uh, St. Joseph's in West Hartford. Mm -hmm. And then St. Joseph's College of Maine. And Simmons is in Boston. Yes. So um, you've got quite a quite a mix of schools there. Yes, yes. So we'll be doing and, and a lot of traveling. And do you play them all in the season, or do you play some, or do you play some twice and some once? How's that scheduling going to work? Yes. So we play them all, but depending on what season, we alternate. So you know, one season we might be going to them, the next they come to us. So, you know, balancing, trying to find balance in the schedule. So, you know, we're not always on the road and wear and tear on the body. So, but either way, it'll be tough. <laughs> well, and the kids have got to stay on top of their, uh, again, you know, their, their, their work when they're on the road in particular. That, uh, you know, these aren't road trips for parties, these are road trips for, uh, Exactly. Business and school. You guys are yes, business trips for sure, for sure. And that's why planning ahead, making sure that you're on top of your academics. And even if we're on the road, you know, um, we're good about staying on as far as like testing. We can do everything pretty much on the road or we can have the tests be sent on the road as well. So we're not getting behind. You know, we're staying up to date with the academic piece. Well, that, uh, that's like I say, it's an, a critical component. Uh, I, I uh, not in recent years, but I've done some adjunct work at Mitchell, and uh, I know that you know, Mitchell has a, a segment of its student population that's that's got uh, special needs. That uh, so, I mean, part of the culture of the school is. Um, Staying on top of uh, of all the students' academic performance. I mean that there are, uh, they're not going to let a kid just fall off the edge. Right, you know? right, right. I mean, if, I mean if they're if they're not up to speed at midterms, for instance, that uh, you know, people are notified and the red flags go up. So yes, that, uh, exactly. Because they don't want people to fail. Yes, yes, and that's the good thing about being there. You know, for freshmen specifically, that transition is hard from high school to college, no matter where you go. So, you know, being at a school like this where everyone knows your name and you can go to your uh, teacher directly and they can work with you a little bit more and be a little bit more hands-on and we have more resources for you specifically, it's, it's hard to, you know, fail here. <laughs> you know, you're, you're just constantly being guided and given the resources to advance, so I feel like that's really important. Now, uh, with some of the high-powered women's basketball in the state of Connecticut, um, have you had an opportunity to uh, interact or meet with uh, Gino Ariyama or any of his staff at Connecticut or anybody with the Connecticut Sun up just up the road at the at the casino. I mean, you've got a professional women's team yes. 15, 20 minutes away. Yes, I am getting closer and closer to, you know, Gino and the Connecticut Sun now. And, you know, I, I reached out to um, staff of the Sun um, last year. I went to Dallas actually for the Final Four. And, you know, um, being a coach, being a part of the coaches association, we do meetings, we do different networking, um, branding events. So I got to catch up with a few staff members from the Sun there. Um, and hopefully that transitions to more in the future. I have not met Gino or anyone from the UConn staff as of yet, but you know, us being so close now, hopefully that happens one day. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I would think that I mean there are clinics that also that that, yes. that, that different coaches uh, are participating in uh, in the region. I mean, in New England, 
And there, and there are adver, you know, a lot of schools in, in, uh, in New England. I mean, the greater Boston area is loaded with them. Definitely. And me, you know, I'm a young coach. Um, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still happy to learn. And I, I just really pick and see different philosophies and tie into what I'm doing. So, you know, I understand that the game is constantly evolving. And the more I can be around coaches that have been in the game longer than me, you know, that's nothing but respect on my end, and I would love to learn from other coaches in the future. Yeah, I mean, a few weeks ago, I had uh, David Cornish in as a guest. He was sitting where you are, and he's newly hired at Newland High School for the boys program. He just replaced, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Chop Parker, who'd been there 29 years. Mm -hmm. I'd gone to school with at Newland High School. Um, but he, uh, he was discussing how he makes it a point to try to get to these clinics. I mean, he's met uh, Tommy Amaker, who played at Duke, and who's okay. now at Harvard yeah. as the head coach, as an example, and, and uh, James Jones at Yale. And uh, so he's met some guys who've had a success at the D1 level. Yes. He's trying to pick their brains and oh, see, yeah. you know, see what they, you know, they bring and uh, what he can bring to back home. Definitely. And also the importance of, of academics that, you know, you, you don't get into college at the, from the high school level if you're, if you're not getting it done in the classroom. You can be a star player and That's they won't right. let you in. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, no matter how good you are, you have to hit the books first and, you know, that it, it never fails. You know, it, it comes back to that and a lot of kids, they miss that point. And at some point, it's going to catch up to you. So you might as well, you know, get everything under control early so that when it comes time for college, you're prepared. Yeah. Well, one of the things that uh, I, I observed and learned in, in that transition uh, is, you know, it, when you're in high school, uh, your life and time is, is pretty structured. I mean, you, yes. you, A, you're living with your parents <laughs> oh, yeah. and their home and, you know, you get up in the morning and you have breakfast and you probably get on a, a bus and go to your school mm -hmm. and then you have your practice and you come home and you have dinner and you do your homework, go to bed, get up the next day, do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of your routine and it's, it's structured. You, you, there's not a lot of time for screwing around. Mm -hmm. But when you get to college and you have perhaps four four classes for a semester and they only meet two or three times a week and it, it gives you this illusion that you've got all this <laughs> spare time. Exactly, exactly. And you don't because that's when you're supposed to be doing homework. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times you're not even prepared out of high school how to really study. <laughs> so, you know, in high school, you're pretty much given the blueprint of what's going to be on the test. But in college, you know, you're given the chapters, you have to read, you have to structure your own notes, and you have to kind of teach yourself through it. So, you know, a lot of times that's not really broken down in high school. So you have to learn that and take a couple bruises along the way. So things to take advantage of are those study tables and, you know, those tutors that you might not want to go to, but you should <laughs> before, you know, you fall behind. Mm -hmm. Now is, uh, um, do you have your own set of athletic tutors for the students or are there, is that just done on an individual basis or does the team have tutoring because they're away so much, especially in season? How does that work? Yes, so we have mandatory round tables, study tables, um, and there you're, ha you're given tutors. If you need them, you can request tutors. Um, but during that time, mm -hmm. you're, you're discussing your academics with your academic advisor. So you're making sure, you know, where you're standing and, you know, what you need to do to get where you want to be. So again, those check-ins along the way to make sure no one is left behind um, because we're constantly on the go. And, you know, as much as the kids think they're organized, they might not be as organized as they think. <laughs> so, you know, just having another pair of eyes on their work um, 
on their syllabus is important, making sure they're on the right track. Yeah. Now, at a school like Mitchell, um, the, the athletes across the board are interacting and they are uh, in the same classes with all the other students, they're in the same dorms with all the other students, they are dining with all the other students, um, which I think is actually a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as a coach, how do you, I hate to use the word ensure, but uh, see that the, your, your players are, are maintaining a, uh, a, a stable diet, that they're just not you know, having you know, cheeseburgers and french fries three meals a day. Yes, that is a great question. You know, the kids, they think that, you know, they don't want to eat in the calf. But I'm like, so if you're not eating in the calf, then what are you eating? Oh, well, we'll just pick up food. We'll just, but no, that's, that's not healthy. That's fast, but that's lazy. And you're not getting the right nutrients and staying on, you know, your regular diet, which you need to have certain calories, certain calorie intake, certain nutrition levels, certain hydration, everything ties into, you know, what you put into your body is what you get out. So, you know, making sure that they know what to put into their body, they know to eat breakfast, they know to start with something in their body, no matter if that's something light, a granola bar, fruit, banana, whatever it may be, but making sure they're eating enough because that's another thing sometimes in women's sports, you know, they're not eating enough and they're burning out these calories and they're wondering why they can't maintain weight or they can't, you know, get a little muscle. Um, but it's because they're not eating properly or not eating simply enough. So, you know, making sure that I'm just educating um, and giving them those tools and trying to manage just with words and if I start seeing things then I'll have to you know amp up what I'm doing a little bit more to try to figure out how to handle the situation but right now just you know really saying the words that they need to hear as far as their diet and also putting them in the weight room um, mm -hmm. we're starting actually um, September 5th we'll be starting our conditioning workouts and starting our power lifting workouts Okay, good. Just want to take a note here. Uh, folks, you're watching City Focus, and uh, I'm Marty Olson, your host, and tonight I'm joined by uh, Ashley Wilson, who's the new head women's basketball coach at Mitchell College here in town. And uh, we are live, and if you'd like to uh, contact the program, you can. You can call 860-440-3154. If you have anything you'd like to contribute, or have any questions for the coach, I'm finding her to be a terrific interview here. She's uh, sharp on the ball and informative. So it's all good. So if this translates onto your coaching, you're in for some success. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you for having me. So um, I, uh, being new in southeastern Connecticut, uh, just on a little tangential thing here, but what are you doing for fun and excitement? I mean, this is a, a little different area. Yes, that's, that's a great question. You know, I'm really exploring all of Bank Street. I'm going all the way down. I'm a foodie, so I love to eat out. <laughs> so, you know, all of the local restaurants, I'm just trying and I'm, I'm probably shouldn't be eating out as much as I am, but probably twice a week, I'll pick a new restaurant and kind of see um, from the seafood. I love seafood. So um, yeah, but besides eating um, at new restaurants, local restaurants, I enjoy the beach as well. So, so do you go to Mitchell Beach or do you go to Ocean Beach? Yes, I've been to both. I've been to both. And you know, being this close to the beach, I've never had this in my life. So I'm taking full advantage <laughs> of being, you know, a three minute drive to the beach. Well, the, the, there's not many colleges that I'm aware of that have their own beach. No, so it's, it's very nice, soft sand. You know, you'll, you'll catch me out there. If you go to the beach, 
I'll probably be there. <laughs> yeah. Now, were you in town when uh, for Sale Fest for the big fireworks show? Yes, yes, that was great. All the all the food trucks. Oh yeah, <laughs> food trucks, great entertainment, and the fireworks show was amazing. Well, that's good. And uh, have you have you had an opportunity to visit the Guard Art Center yet? I have not. No. Well, you got to find a find a show or program and and uh, take in an, an evening at the Guard. It's uh, oh, wow. a magnificent theater. Okay. Yes, I'll put that on my list as well as the ferry. I heard there's a ferry to there's three ferries. Block Island. Block Island. I've mm -hmm. never been, so it's a few things that I want to get to. Yep. And there's a, it's a Long Island. They got the Orient Point. It goes to Long Island. Oh wow! Greenport and Fisher's Island. Although Fisher's Island is not too friendly for the tourists. They kind of like they're isolated and they like it that way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for the rich and famous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> not the Hamptons. Oh yeah, yeah. We're not. We're not there yet. We're not there. <laughs> the Block Island. Just a nice day trip. Yeah, yeah, so I've heard. So hopefully soon I'll make it there. Yeah. And have you been to see the sun? Well, we have a schedule to go there the 31st. Yep, I'll be taking taking the team to the game. Oh, you take the team? Yes. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Yep. So that'll be a good outing for us. Yep. Now, do you do you have uh I mean, what kind of rules or parameters are set up by the NCAA in terms of uh your practices in terms of time, uh, when you start, uh, calendar-wise, uh, when you're in season versus preseason, uh, what type of activities they can do. Um, uh, I can't imagine that you have carte blanche and can do whatever you want. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, before and years previous. We've been starting around April, uh, October 15th. So now we pushed it up two weeks. So now given the October 1 start date, we're now allowed to do small group workouts. So let's say I have an hour and a half, I can split my team into two and just do individual skill set oriented work with them for 45 minutes here and then with the second group, another 45 minutes. But after that period, that two week period, um, once we hit October 15th, we're good to go with um, two hour practices. So two hour on court, and then I can add another hour of weight room or conditioning work. What about classroom work? I mean, X's and O's, or you don't, is that more of a football thing? Yes, so that can be tied into just extracurricular. So that time isn't isn't delegated into that three hour time frame. So I can do as much as that as I want to. So that's great. So we can do film work, you know, play breakdown, um, anything, just X's and O's in my office. That I have full range. Now, do you? Uh or will you use young men in practice? Yes, yes. I find that really, really beneficial. Um, thankfully, our baseball players are very helpful in that, so I've heard. So I've been in contact with a few players and they're willing to come into practice and be more of like a scout team for us. And that's good for our physicality, our speed, um, and just our overall intensity. I feel like playing against the guys, you know, the girls are excited, the guys are excited, and it just raises the level of competition, and that gets us more game ready. Yeah. Now, do you, do you need to have a conversation with the young fellows prior to getting involved with this, to recognize that their job is not to win, it's to, <laughs> it's to improve the play of, of, the, of, the, of the women's team. Right, right, right. It's not about you and being prideful and, you know, <laughs> going all out. It's about doing what it takes to make our players better. Right. So definitely having that prior conversation is important. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't have these guys going in there thinking that, you know, this is the time to showboat and show exactly. off these. Exactly. 
That, that, that's uh, counterproductive. Exactly, exactly. So yes. Well, this is. The, I'm excited. I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to your your season and seeing when your schedule is uh, is uh, is published. I'm a, I'm a big sports guy. I love. Uh, I mean, starting not this week. Actually, I'm going to see the Red Sox and Dodgers on Saturday. Oh, nice. <clears throat> First time I've been at Fenway in a few years, but. Uh, oh, that'll be good. Uh, but starting the following week, I try to get a college football game in on Saturdays mm -hmm. all season. So, yeah. So I, that's something I I played football in high school. So oh, okay. that was my sport. Uh, gotcha. So you're a football <laughs> guy. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I, I enjoy watching uh, the local high school kids and the local colleges, and uh, it's fun. And yes. I think that uh, one of the things that I think I, I wish our our local town would get and see the the young college players play the division three quality of play is improved tremendously yes yes uh, I, uh, the men and the women and the women's game is improving every year the players mm -hmm. are getting better and their skill sets are better and it's uh, it's more fun to watch oh yeah and uh so I, mean, I look forward to that, and I and I know at the, at, at the men level, I mean, you know, the Con, Con College is in a terrific conference, as is Coast Guard, mm -hmm. and uh, a few years ago at, with the men uh, in Con College's conference, I mean, Amherst ended up being the national champs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and within a year or two of that, in Coast Guard's conference, Babson College outside of Boston. Yeah. National champ, Division Three. Okay. So I mean, you got some good players. I oh, mean, yeah. And sometimes the high school kids they go, ah, they poo poo Division Three, but the yeah. players are good. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. I mean, they don't know how good. I mean, they're all exactly. captains of their team. They were all state or all conference mm -hmm. or whatever. They they weren't the twelfth man or woman on the bench. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's competitive. It really is. So I'm excited. I'm excited to be here and to get it going. Yeah. It's been terrific, and we're out of time. It's amazing how the time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. But I want to thank you for carving out an hour and oh. spending it with me and uh, here on City Focus, and uh, and we'll have you back on probably after the season. I got a feeling you're going to be going hell's bells here for <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> oh and, uh, yeah. And uh, but we'll catch up with you, and uh, we'll keep an eye on the team, and yeah. wish you a lot of success. Sounds good, and I look forward to being back with you. Thank Alrighty. you. Alrighty, thanks a bunch, folks. You've been watching City Focus, and we'll see you next week. Have a good night.